Namaste everyone. Thank you for joining in this video where we'll be looking at how to predict the primary focus of the spouse after the marriage. Okay, so this is an interesting yet very less known topic that is not widely discussed and I thought I should take this, take this thing up in my next video. So here it is, you know, how to predict the focus of the spouse after the marriage. This means where your spouse will be primarily interested after he or she gets married to you. Okay, but then before we go to the meat of the topic, kindly subscribe to the channel, like the content if you find it useful, and please share it with your friends and family if you think they can benefit from this knowledge. Okay, so to know where your spouse will focus on after the marriage, you need to look at the placement of the seventh lord of the navamsha chart the navamsha is the chart which is also known as the d9 chart or is known as the bhagya amsha chart so to understand where the spouse will focus on after the marriage or where the focus of the spouse will be after the marriage you have to look at where the you have to look at the house placement of the seventh lord of navamsha okay so if the seventh lord of D9 is placed in the first house of D9, then the spouse will have a lot of interest in your own personality. Okay, He or she would be very particular about your appearance, about how you dress up, about how you go out, about whom you are meeting. You know, the spouse will, the interest of the spouse will be all about you. Okay, that is the focus that is going to be for the spouse after the marriage. If the seventh lord of the D9 chart is in the second house of T9, then the spouse would be primarily interested in spending time with you, you know, spending we time, spending family time with you. The spouse would be more interested in expanding the family. Okay, the spouse would be more interested in learning about the family assets, the generational wealth of the family, the history of the family, the lineage of the family, and so on. Okay, if the seventh lord of the Navamsha is placed in the third house of the of the Navamsha chart, then the after the marriage, you know, the spouse would be more interested in traveling with you. Okay, the spouse would be more interested in building up the relationship of communication with you. The spouse would be more interested in, you know, in trying out new physical flavors with you. You know, maybe trying out this sexual position, or maybe you know, I've read the I've read this chapter from Kama Sutra. Let's try out that sexual position. Okay, so it's a very, you know, it's a very spicy thing to have the seventh lord in the third house if you're in the Navamsha chart. Okay, the spouse would also be interested in making short distance travels with you, maybe a day's trip or maybe, you know, uh, a trip where you're required to travel to a place and then come back on the same day. The spouse would be more than willing to travel with you to that place and give you company. Okay, if the seventh lord of the d9 chart is placed in the fourth house of d9 then your spouse would be more interested in caring for you you know the spouse would be very much emotionally attached to you the spouse would want your emotional attention the spouse would you know try to grab your emotional attention the spouse would be more interested in maybe having that new car or maybe you know constructing that new house after the marriage or maybe acquiring that new property after marriage okay if the Seventh, if the seventh lord of the D9 chart is placed in the fifth house of D9, then in that case, the spouse would be more interested in romance. Okay, so this is a situation where you might find yourself getting into an arranged marriage, but then after the marriage, love suddenly starts blossoming between you and your spouse. Okay, this is a wonderful thing to have, and uh, the spouse would also be interested in, uh, you know, in. Uh, having kids with you the spouse kids would would also be a very important focal focal point for the spouse you know for expansion of the family for you know for completion of motherhood for completion of fatherhood and so on and uh, all of a sudden you might find your spouse getting into speculative activities in the into the share market in the you know in the in the commodities market in the satta bazaar as they say in hindi okay uh if the seventh lord 
of the D9 chart is placed in the sixth house of D9. So this is a difficult position to have, okay? Because then you would find your spouse competing with you in each and every part, you know, in your finances, in your career, and so on, okay? So the spouse would be more interested in competing with you and having the better things and having a share of the better things in your life, okay? Uh, sometimes I've seen this combination working out in a way that the spouse, that the native always often finds a spouse who belongs to the same office or who works in the same office or has the same background. A friend of mine has this combination. He works in the in the IT field in Bangalore and he found a spouse who works in the IT field in Pune. Okay, so this is something that can happen if you have this placement. If the seventh lord of the seventh house is placed in the seventh house itself of the T9 chart, then you would find your spouse entering into a contract after marriage for a business or for any kind of a partnership. Okay. So another friend of mine has this combination. So he, you know, after got, after getting married, he got into a partnership with his wife for starting some, you know, for starting some company related to manufacturing of uh, slippers, rub rubber slippers as such. So this is just an example. Similarly, the if this combination is there, then the spouse would make a lot of effort to improve the marriage, to improve the relationship, to improve the partnership from all directions. Okay, so this is a good placement to have again. All right. Uh, if you have the seventh lord of the D1 of the D9 chart in the eighth house of D9, then the spouse would be more interested in your inheritance. Then the spouse would be more interested in her family. Okay, in her or his family, you know the family of the spouse would be more important or would be more prominent, prominent for the spouse if you have this combination. Uh, this combination would also, in this combination also implies that the spouse would be prone to having events very suddenly or very, you know, without notice in his or her life that can make it difficult for you, you know, to adjust regarding certain things, okay? Uh, similarly, you can uh, find your spouse engaging in some secret activities or gossip, you know, or, you know, or conspiracy theories if you have this placement in your Navamsha chart. Again, if the seventh house, oh, sorry, if the seventh lord of the D9 is placed in the ninth house of D9, then your spouse would be very religious, would be devoted, you know, to to religion, would be interested in higher education. Okay, so I had this client who was a you know who was a master degree holder, but his spouse, his wife, she went for a PhD and uh, she went to abroad for further studies and things like that happened manifested. So this happened right after the marriage. Even the girl was not aware that she would be you know all of a sudden she would be having an interest to get a PhD that too from a foreign university. So this also means that your spouse would be more interested in taking long trips with you. You know. Not as a honeymoon, but suppose you are in a job that requires you to travel to different countries or to different cities of the world or to different cities within the country, then your spouse would express his or her willingness to travel with you to become your travel partner. Okay. If the seventh lord of D9 is placed in the 10th house of D9, then the spouse would be very interested in your status. Okay. The spouse would constantly push you to expand your status in the society. Okay. And that expansion can happen either by buying property or by, you know, getting a better paying job or by making more money or by having a better car or a better home and so on. Okay. The spouse would be very conscious of your status. Okay. Your status in the society would define the status of the spouse. So this is the seventh lord in the 10th house. Okay. <laughs> if the seventh lord of D9 is placed in the 11th house of T9, then the spouse would be keenly interested in your network circle, would be keenly interested in your friend circle, in the group of friends that you have. Okay, so if you say you, before marriage, you had, you had the habit of having, you know, night outs with friends. Now your spouse would be more than willing to join in those, to join you in those night outs. Before marriage, you suppose you, you, you used to attend office parties alone. Now your spouse would insist to take him or her along to your office parties and to your social get togethers. Okay. If the seventh Lord of the D9 is placed in the 12th house of T9, in that case, the spouse would be very, very interested in having a strong sexual relationship with you. The spouse would be very, very interested in, you know, visiting holy places with you. Okay. There would be more occasions where, you know, you and your spouse would just be together without saying a word, just enjoying the presence of each other in a very quiet environment. Okay. I've seen this happening, you know, with, with a client, he and his spouse, they take a, 
yearly break every day to some secluded islands where they can you know where they can just enjoy themselves in their own company in a very secluded place so this is very much possible if you have the seventh lord of you know of d9 in the 12th house of d9 okay so this is how you can predict the interest of the spouse after the marriage you know what would your spouse focus after the marriage and this as i said this is a very lesser known trick but it works wonderfully if you apply it in your chart please do apply it and do let me know your feedback in the comment section okay so that's all for me in this video i will see you soon in yet another video till then namaste om guru venamaha